get the feeling we're going to enjoy this one. Over to you. Thank you, Hazel. Well, what an atmosphere. I hope that's coming through at home, through your television sets, because it's absolutely electric. I sometimes wonder, Stephen, how people Thank can you. hold the queue in the first couple of shots with this type Thank of atmosphere. You, ladies and gentlemen. You've been there. First Just going to concentrate Ronnie on your game, aren't you? Yeah, this is what being a top snooker player is all about. Playing atmospheres like this. And it's amazing, up to a few years ago, Stuart Bingham, you wonder what he even thought he'd be in matches like this. His, his career started so late. Or his winning, his winning career, as it were. Yeah, as we've said before, there's so many tournaments now that uh, I suppose you get a lot more match practice, if you like, than you used to. But what an opportunity for Stuart Bingham to prove, as we see that great long part, to prove why he's world champion. One. That's what I'd be thinking if I was Stuart. Everyone expecting a Sullivan, or possibly to be the Ronnie O'Sullivan show tonight, but what better stage to prove that you're the world champion? Stuart Bingham, one. Terrific opening red, but just ran past the bolt line. That's why he had to settle for the snooker. But it's not a straightforward escape, this. There's reds on either side of the cluster. So, as I say, it's uh, not certain to not leave a pot on. Coming round of four cushions. Shorter pace, is it? Foul, no, the good try. <laughs> and I think it will be replaced because I can't see a pot on. It was a decent line from Ronnie. <laughs> but even that line, he's not guaranteed to leave it safe. bit harder this time, but then it will slide off the fourth cushion. Foul, the miss. Stuart Bingham, four. Once again, there'll be no hesitation from Stuart in having this replaced. Ronnie may look for an alternative route here. He underhit the first attempt and then overhit that one, and that just squared it up off the first cushion. He's trying to nestle into the cluster just below the pink here. But the yellow's in the way and the jaw of the middle pocket. It's always going to slide off this fourth cushion. But this well, time, miss. he might Stripping not take the miss because I think there's a red, a possible red to the left middle. And I've got to be honest with you, I thought it was in. Yeah, yeah that'll please Ronnie, right in the heart of the pocket. Eight. Nine. Couple of loose reds to play for. Hasn't really got the angle on the green to go into the cluster, so you'd think he'd play for one of the loose reds. He's just about come far enough. Twelve. He wants to pot this and not run into another red. Thirteen. 
Now he'll have eyes on the cannon if he's got the angle. A little bit straighter than he would like. That's why he's going to have to play for the, the one remaining loose red. So it looks like he's too low to 20. play on the black. I have to go for the blue here. 21. The red that's to the left of the table, I think, pots to the right corner, so that's the one he'll play for here. Cue that lovely. Tight under the cushion to play it with pace. Good cue in needed 27. and got. 28. Another opportunity, well, the first opportunity to go into them now. You had a good angle on the black. You always need a little bit of luck. And it might just be OK. 35. And that red has gone to the far left corner, and I think he may just be able to cue past the red. If he can, if he can get to the middle of the cue ball, it shouldn't be a problem. this to perfection. 46. Choice now. I think this is the last of the loose reds. Do you play for the black or the blue? Decided to play for the 52. black. Well, he stopped in his tracks there as he got the perfect angle. Because as I say, there's nothing available. We've got to force this cue ball into that cluster. No, he just didn't get the correct angle on the black. So he won't be winning the frame 59. at this visit. It's a break there from Ronnie and a wonderful finish. Good safety. Stuart, 46 points behind. Just looking at that, it could be the, the brown that's stopping him coming off the right-hand side cushion. The left-hand cushion is a little bit trickier. You could just overhit it and leave, possibly leave a red on. He'd like to come down the right-hand side of the table as we look, but as I say, the brown's just in the way. So I'm coming off two cushions. Judged it well. And no call of touching ball from referee Colin Humphreys. Good length. Puts a bit of pressure now on this safety shot from Stewart. He knows one more mistake and it'll be end of frame. So we've got to catch this just right. No, it wasn't. That was basically a fluke. Only when the player plays a safety shot, he's playing to land in a bolt cushion. That's a bonus. To land here, and this is not easy to get safe. Mm, it's not bad. I don't think Stuart will be taking this red along the black cushion. No, as you say, Stuart was trying to find the bolt cushion, not the bolt line behind the yellow. But well, if you have a little bit of luck, can you take advantage? He's got the red to the right middle. As Stephen says, you wouldn't really 
I think he'd be tempted by the red along the top cushion. Well, he's looking at it. This looks tougher than the one to the middle to me. Oh, oh. tremendous pot. That was brilliant. Oh. That was such a tough point to play at that pace, John, of two cushions. Fantastic shot, this. So what a chance he's given himself now. 38 points behind. Eight. Nine. Well, it's only the first frame, but this visit is so important in the context of the match, I feel. Stuart doesn't take this opportunity and let's run off the hook. Just, 16. Just gives Ronnie that, that boost. You just think, well, my, my opponent's not going to take his chances. 17. Mm. If he's straight, <coughs> that's a poor shot. That's why he's looking at the blue. Yeah, slight mistake there, because those three reds are really only available into the left corner, so he play for the pink, he's playing the blue. No problem, right in the heart of the pocket. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Well, I put that black. Right-hand side of the pocket as we look at it, put it thick. That's why he's come up short with the cue ball. Shouldn't still shouldn't be a problem. Play for pink or blue. Thirty-one. Well controlled. Done for the pink to the right corner. Leave a, a half ball angle just to. 37. We might even go for the blue. 38. Yeah, decided to go up for the blue. This blue will put him three points behind. So he now needs up to and including the pink to take this first frame. 43. 45. Mm, just a, yeah, a couple inches short being perfect. Might have to use a bit of check side here. 48. So, is this the first? Psychological blow in this match. Fifty two. Blue and pink needed. Fifty seven. Perfect. Eight perfect. To be fair, did nothing wrong. He made a break of 59, and then all of a sudden, Stewart has got back in. All okay, right, a bit fortuitous when he got the snooker on the yellow, but that paved the way for a 63 frame winning break. 1 0 to the world champion. Ladies. Well, he's left Ronnie the Long red here, half ball pot to the left corner. This will tell us how Ronnie's here, and he's just pausing. There's a few late comers just taking the seats. Ah, oh, wonderful, wonderful! Never touch the side. 
similar, of course, to the opening red. I mean, um, we keep saying about the break-off shot now, it's becoming like a poison chalice. If you don't get it right, you could be sat down for the rest of the frame. It's a Six. tough school. Yeah, it was a comfortable long pot that Stuart left Ronnie. A shot that professionals would probably expect to get maybe seven, eight times out of ten, so got to so tighten that break off up. To get, as we see this break off, he's playing to get the cue ball Ten. in behind the yellow. Just didn't get into the cue ball enough. Yeah, just caught it a little bit thicker, but if it rolls on another six inches, amazingly enough, and finishes tight on the cushion, it makes the pot so much more difficult. But it was a tremendous opening red from Ronnie. Well, that was a, a big misjudgment there. I'm sure he played. Well, he obviously played to get an angle, and he obviously played to get an angle in a bolt color to go into the bunch. So he's overscrewed that by Ronnie O'Sullivan. A good couple 11. of feet there. Yeah, I mean, I thought he was going to screw back for the blue. Yeah, me too, John. And then I've seen the blues actually off its spot, so. You can say he must have been playing for a bolt colour. Judged it nicely. And once again, whenever your opponent rolls in the ball, you're always hoping for the referee to say touching ball, but it wasn't. So Ronnie just had to play the containing safety. He couldn't get back to the ball, Ken, but Stuart can. Again, Stuart will be disappointed with the length of cue ball there. But Ronnie, I assumed he could get to the potting angle. Didn't think it was worthwhile taking on because he wasn't guaranteed position. If you've got a tough pot and you're not guaranteed to be on a colour, no value. too thick, much too thick. And I think Stuart can just get past the blue for this red. He can. Six. See, a lot of players just brush the cloth with their hand. It's usually when there's a few screw shots and you get a little chalk dust Seven. around. See a couple of examples 14. of that. A feature.
feature of Stewart's run to winning the World Championship was his, his high scoring when he was in the balls. And when he's playing well, he does score very, very heavily. 15. And at pace as well. So it's good to see him looking confident and looking like he's going to score heavily again. Doesn't waste much time around the table. 22. Twenty-three. You can see average shot time identical. Yeah. Looks very composed out there. Thirty. Of course, he's no stranger to playing Ronnie. We talk about when he beat him in the quarter-final, but they've had many a practice session together in the early days. 31. I wouldn't think he'd play a cannon here. It'd be a little bit risky, because he's got three reds that are available into the same pocket as this black. Ooh! Ooh! Oh. Took his eye off the pot. Took his eye off the pot. Thank you. Unforgivable, I'm afraid. Cannot what? afford any unforced errors tonight. At least not, not many. So Stuart, first frame, pinch the frame. Is Ronnie going to do the same? Eight. Yeah, these reds aren't too badly situated. Nine. A bit straight on the black. I think there's a middle red that will go into the opposite corner as the black. But decided to play from one to the right middle. A little trickier. But of 16. course, when he pots this, he'll clear the path for the, the red just to the left of it. Well, as I say, they're a little bit trickier, 16. particularly when you Ronnie play at that Sullivan. pace. And if you look where the cue ball's finished, he's overhit that again. Give Stuart a bit of encouragement, a bit of confidence. Seen Ronnie miss an easy shot like that when he probably feared going back to his chair there. His black of a spot might have cost him the frame. He's landed straight in his black, so lots of right hand side here. Oh, that's a good shot. I didn't see that right at the bottom of the three, went to the left corner, so. That was very well played. Wow. It was tight, John, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I was looking behind it and I thought, well... And when they're tight like that, you see it so many times. Is it the wrong red? But because he only hit it very thin, it didn't stop him getting to the potted angle. But the bottom line is, he's on nothing. And it's end of break. So a great chance has gone. Asking for the extended spider, I can only assume that he, he can't afford to go back to the ball end because of that red that's adjacent to the left middle. So he's just going to drop on the black. I wouldn't have used the spider for this, to be honest with you, but there you go. Look at the, the distance between the spider and the cue ball, anyway. 
He made a good job of it. That's what he was playing. Trying to leave Ronnie hampered by the black. And he's done just that. certain whether Stuart will attempt this red. The red that's second left to the pink, I think that pots. Well, decided not to take it on. Well, it's okay. That red that was second left to the pink doesn't go now because it's blocked and you can't play the one just below the pink because that was a date. Oh, this is a bonus. That's a bonus. One. Little shake of the head from Stuart. He knows that Ronnie didn't play that. <laughs> what we were saying in the first frame, Stephen, these little fractions, Straight. these little bits of run the ball that sometimes are hardly noticeable can make Four. all the difference between winning and losing a frame. Yeah, but like you, John, I was a little bit surprised. Stuart never potted that red that you run about. Yeah, absolutely. Or went for the pot. Yeah. Ten. Eleven. Well, Ronnie's going to need the awkward brown. <coughs> now, for most right-handed players, it'd be really awkward, but of course, because he can change hands so well, he's a little bit disappointed to just screw too far. Once again, he screwed a little, he's a bit close to the cushion he would like. Good cue he needed 16. here, digging in. Got to hit this in the middle. Oh, super shot. But he doesn't want to be stooped too straight on the green. Still needs green, brown and blue. 21. Beautiful, what a yellow this was though. And in goes the pink, so Stuart Bingham had his chance there. This had left off the spot. I thought he'd got away with it. And then he turned down a, a pot that looked like a shot for nothing for some reason. Ronnie got a fortuitous plant. It's what a piece. Well, it's... When both players have won a frame, as they've done, uh, you just feel they're now going to settle in and... This could be an absolute classic. Oh, I just missed it. And I'll tell you what, that double kiss for once has helped Stuart Bingham. If he doesn't get the double kiss, he's left this red on, for sure. Wouldn't think that'll cause Stuart any problem. Just come off the left hand side cushion, nestling to the reds below the pink. He'll be hoping he doesn't leave a touching ball. <coughs> He's played it pretty well.
That's a good shot. It's always the key if you're going to get a good safety, you've got to miss the ball colour. And if you catch one full, invariably you're going to leave your opponent a chance. It's a little bit concerning, I would think, for Stuart. Two long reds he's missed in this frame. Oh, but Ronnie's knocked it in or over. It's in! <laughs> and the look on Ronnie's face, he can't believe how that red went into the pocket. He was worried about knocking one towards the right corner. Just look how it went off two balls and dropped in. And perfect on the green. And of course, that is the thing that happens, Stephen, on the table, Four. 12 foot by six. The run of the ball sometimes can make all the difference. Yeah, it was a, it was a pretty slack safety shot, you'd have to say. Looking, looking at the red was going to go Five. near that corner pocket, but as you say, he's fluked it, so he's got the chance in this frame, the first chance. Be going into the bunch here. Can't avoid them, so trusting a bit to luck. Twelve. This red he's closest to to the right corner, he's going to be running to other reds. And when you're close to a ball like this, it's very hard to inject the type of pace that's required to run through the other reds. So he's got one to the right middle. I think he's got one to the left middle. Thirteen. Killed it nicely. Eighteen. Mm. Eighteen. Just deactivated on that one, trying to hold Thank it you. for the black. Just didn't get the cue through, as he would have liked. So a few misses from both players. Stuart's got to pounce on these mistakes from Ronnie, he really has. Yeah, I agree. I just don't think Ronnie's timing at the moment is just right. We saw him overscrew a ball in the last frame by a long way. And sometimes he's, you know, you get a bit of tension in the arm, you just got to settle down, relax, and push the cue through nicely. So Stuart's got to take advantage of these opportunities. Not like a better shot than it looked. I don't know if he's come far enough for this red to the right corner. Well, you'd have to say his body language he has. Six. That was awkward cue in there. Bingham, six. Mm. Missed that by a long way. OK, he was playing with a bit of right-hand side on, but he knows that the right-hand side is going to throw the cue ball into the red. That's why he's hit it too thick. Shouldn't be missing those.
Well, they could have left. It has left Stuart, I think, this red to the left centre. It could have left an easier one, but I didn't expect him to get it. So neither player on it as yet. And I can assure you, as a snooker player, there's no better feeling when you've just missed one like that and left your opponent in, and an opponent like Ronnie O'Sullivan, he doesn't take advantage. You can forget the bad shot you played on your last visit. Judgment. Well, trying to stretch over, so obviously he doesn't feel that confident with the rest, but couldn't get to it. A little bit of work to do with the cue ball here. He played it nicely. And he looks as though he's recovered the situation somewhat. Well, not perfect Seven. on this red to the left middle. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's going to have to go in and out of bulk here. Shake of the head there from Stuart as Ronnie taps his cue. I think the the problem that Stuart's seeing here, he'd like to stun this red in, but that red on the right hand side of the table, if he stuns it, he's got to avoid the kiss on that. So I played it plain ball. Now that red on the right hand side of the table, is it gonna ruin the position? Eight. Can he get through to the blue? I think he can. Just yeah, and if he's going to play for the red on the black cushion, doesn't want to be straight on this. The worst kind of straight, 13. just off straight. You have to be careful with this. Looks like he's going to have to play the screw and play for the black in the same pocket, but got to be accurate. Well, 14. What? To say he used all the pocket, pocket there would be an understatement. Well, the red did jump a little bit, in fairness. But he didn't have a good angle on that. But this is the modern game. Look at this. Black is taking on. And getting. <laughs> Tremendous pot. Yeah, this was excellent. You have to think if he missed that, it was going to cost him the frame. So you say, John, it's the only way to play these days. Can't be always running away for safety, waiting for chances. You've got to take them yourself. He's got the red to the left corner. He's, he's just concerned that he could run into a second red and lose position, but just concentrate on the pot. And he did run into the second red. 22. The 
Well, if the blue goes to the right middle, if not, it'll have to be the green. While well, the blue does pass the red. He just can't get absolute perfect position. Just always landing that little bit awkward. He just needs to drop this in. He's got a red that's another red close to the right middle pocket, so it doesn't matter if he leaves low, himself low in the blue here. 28. So no problem, you would feel, in taking this third frame from here. to be absolutely perfect. It's got the right angle to roll it in and bounce off the the side cushion. Be nicely on the blue. Thirty-four. We'd have liked to have got that cue ball a little bit further away from the cushion. to the red so although he's on this red to the left of the pink using the rest 39. it's missable Missed the red with the rest. What's he left? <laughs> this needs to slow up, and it has done. And Stuart, shaking his head there, knew that was a great chance. Well, he just never got pinpoint position at any time during that visit. And it caught him out in the end. Yeah, when you're not getting perfect position, it's just ruining your rhythm all the time. Your natural rhythm, natural pace that you play the game. Four. You're also having to walk around the table, stop, look at things. Five. So I expected Stuart to win the frame at his visit. Now I expect it to cost him the frame. You love it. He hasn't been. Twelve. That black now puts Ronnie eight points behind. You wouldn't think you'd want to play for the black here. Up for the blue and make it easier to get on the yellow. 20. Just about OK. I think you can just hold for the yellow. Yeah, cued it nicely. So two points behind. He needs it up to and including the pink. To win a frame that 27. Stuart Bingham will be sat there seething that he's let slip. Yeah, with the, some of the scoring we've seen in the matches this week, this has been, you'd have to say, scrappy 30. stuff so far tonight. That could all change, of course. Thirty-four. Mm, that's not perfect. Another frame that could have gone either way, but 
Stuart Bingham had a few chances, he didn't take them. And Ronnie O'Sullivan now leads by two frames to one. Excellent snooker in the few years it's been here and uh, matches like this, you know, fans love them. Sure do, we're loving it too. This is the last one before their interval. Good length with a cue ball. Quiet, please. Too thick. I was thinking I was hearing the shouting out there. Ronnie has said that he wants more of that in the game, so I shouldn't really put him off. Oh. Interesting, John. Ronnie went uh, you know, out of the arena after that frame there. You're only allowed now three exits from the arena now. It's only 2-1. It'd be interesting Six. to keep our eyes on that. Yeah, the interesting thing was, Seven. though, by the time the referee, Colin Humphreys, had set the balls up and was ready to call Stuart to the table to break off, Ronnie was back in the arena. I think Ronnie's not taking a toilet break. He just wants to get out of the arena in between frames. And surely there can't be any law about that, as long as you're not keeping your opponent waiting. 14, 15. So into the reds off this black. Mm. Always trust a little bit to look, but I don't think he's had any. Obviously, no pot on. He's looking at the red that's in the bulk end. Now, the only way I can see him playing this, because he can't get to it full, is he's pointing now to come off bulk cushion first. But I don't guarantee he's going to get that safe. So I'm just playing safe to this area, stunning this red up the table. 22, Stuart Bingham. advantage playing that shot is to get the cue ball tight to the top cushion. Stuart will be able to raise the butt of the cue here and dig in. Always got to be careful though. He needs that cue ball back to the top cushion. And he's not quite got it there and there's a possible red here to the right middle. Hmm. Maybe not that confident at the moment, Ronnie. It looks like he didn't even look at that red to the right middle. I mean, it is fraught with danger, but I'm a bit surprised he didn't take that on. Yeah, and he may just have forced Stuart Bingham into a corner here. If Stuart doesn't think he's got a good safety, he might play this thin cut on this red to the right middle. Cut him, oh. the cue ball's got in the pocket. He was forced into that for. because he didn't see a good safety, so you can only say that Ronnie O'Sullivan's choice of shot has worked in his favour.
great chance now. Six. To take a 3 1 lead into the mid session interval. Seven. <coughs> None of these four reds near the pink spot go, so I may choose to play a cannon here. Yep. Well, at first glance, it looks like it hasn't worked out. You would have thought he was guaranteed and being something. 14. Yeah, it's okay. It's got a red to the right center. 15. Yeah, the fraction's just favouring, although you'd have to say if he hadn't have been on that red, he'd have been unlucky. <coughs> Couldn't wish for the balls to be better situated. 17. That red makes the points all square. 18. I have to say, John, that black off a spot now that Stuart Bingham missed in the second frame when he was in with a chance to go 2-0. I'm talking about 23. when I said mentioned about he couldn't afford any or many unforced errors. It looks like it's costing them a 3-1 deficit. Here it is. You just can't afford those at this level. Stuart looks on that Ronnie's knocked to red close to the side cushion, which was not part of the plan. Just about okay. 39. Wouldn't want to be hampered by that red closest to the cue ball. Forty. Twenty-two points to lead. There's enough reds away from the cushion to not make it too difficult, this. Don't they hit that slightly, though? Straight 45. on this red would have been better. So 33 points in front. If he's going to get over the line here, he needs high-value colours. 51. So he might even have to play for the pink off this red and then play for the red near the bought cushion. You could do it with a blue and a pink. 52. Decided to play for the pink. Well, that puts Ronnie 40 points in front. Well, he's looking at it now. In actual fact, off this red, green or brown would be sufficient. 59. This blue to go 46 points in front with 43 remaining. <laughs> 64. It's funny, before the match, Stephen, I was saying that Stuart knows that he'll have to play at his very best, but he's made a few too many mistakes 17. so far. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 70, and the three. And that's it. Stuart Bingham concedes, so they go to the mid-session into a Ronnie O'Sullivan with a 3-1 advantage, and he's not had to produce his best yet. Yes, thank you, Hazel. And uh, both players are back, just uh, filling their glasses with the water. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And Stuart Bingham with a little bit to think Frame about. Five, he looked Ronnie O'Sullivan quite calm and 
collected. Quiet, I saw him at the mid-session interval. But as Stephen said in that second frame when he missed the black off the spot, would that have been the frame that is put him under pressure in this match? In there, he thought that might be in, but just a fraction out. Yeah, it always interests me, John, how different players what they do in the intervals. I mean, if I was 3 1 down the semi final, the masses of the immigration would be fuming. I'd be like trying to get myself up. Stuart was in the in, in the press room there, you know, relaxed, talking to everybody. But everybody's different. Can't that much too thin. As it turns out, the blue has just come in the way slightly. Wry smile from Ronnie. But he can just get past the blue to the thin edge on this red. Oh, oh, where's the red going? Oh, he's cut it in. Well, it was probably all he could see of the red. It was a guide. Cued that nicely. Now, you'd think he'd want to go up off the blue here. Is it? Oh. There's not many reds in, in the open. He won't want to play for the black and play the cannon. Needs an angle on the blue. Six. Absolutely inch perfect. Oh, that was a lovely shot. Just a nice bit of left hand side. He just took the, the cue ball to the right side of the blue. And he's okay here. I think the pink pot's to the left corner. He's got a red to the right corner. Eleven. Stuart Bingham in the background, scratching his head. He fears the worst here. Twelve. Eighteen. Nineteen. Just about okay there. He had to flick off the pink. He's just overscrewing one of these, one or two of these shots. Which is unlike Ronnie. He's usually inch perfect with his positional play. Twenty-five. I think he'd be way relaxed. No, Ronnie. He's 26. not been at his best by a long stretch. He's still three went up. A heavy contact there, I think. Yeah, I think you're right, Stephen. That cue ball didn't run as it should. Now you see it. But a good shot with the rest. And when you consider how easily he switched his hands, it's amazing how good he is with the rest, because he doesn't use 32. it often. Thirty nine. Forty. Another, you'd have to see it. Poor positional shot. Good three or four inches short with the cue ball. No problem potting the pink, of course. It just makes the positional side of the shot a little bit more tricky, but that's fine. Pink doesn't pot to the right corner, though, so... 46. Just screw back for the blue to the right centre. 
47. Played it well and perfect on the blue. You take nothing for granted because John Parrott came out with a terrific line that Joe Davis used to say, there's no easy shots at snooker. So you can't drop your guard for a second, but... 53. What an opportunity this is. He's just overrun that a fraction on the blue. Can he hold for the red to the left corner? He couldn't, but he's nicely avoided the kiss on the black, and that is inch perfect. 58. The pink. 59. And one more red. So Stuart Bingham won't be coming back to the table. He's staring 4-1 deficit in the face here. Raise of the eyebrows from Ronnie there. I think he thought he'd missed that pink. 73. May play for the black here. 79. Because he can just roll in the black and he can get on the other red that's near the top cushion. And with this red being tight to the cushion, you wouldn't expect him to miss it. 87. Oh, it was just off the cushion. But no problem. Just beginning, it seems, to be going 95. through the gears now. Uh, I have to say, he's been allowed to do that. John, uh, the first four frames was very scrappy. As we keep going about that black of the spot, the second frame is when he makes the century. And Stuart missed a trick in this match early on. Just over six and a half minutes for that century break. 106. Yeah, there's one telling stat at the moment. Ronnie O'Sullivan's pot success is 96%. Stuart Bingham's is only at 87%. 115. That's not good enough in this class. Well, it's very too difficult, so he's not going to have a go at it. But once again, Stuart Bingham had a chance. But it was Ronnie who seems to be slipping into a higher gear. And he now leads by three frames, 4-1. Yeah, this is the, the fluke. I don't think for any stretch that Ronnie was going for this red. But even... See the raise of the hand there from Ronnie, but I think Stuart sat in his chair. Probably didn't think it was going to cost him the frame. No, but to be fair, uh, OK, I agree with you. It was a bit fortunate to pot the red, but Stuart's safety shot that came in and out of balk uh, left him a chance of that. Yeah, he's just not... He's just not put Ronnie under enough pressure tonight. That was you know, the safety shot we were talking about. But yes, you're right. I mean, with any player, you've got to make them aware. If they make a mistake, you're going to punish them. And Stuart hasn't done that so far. No, I mean, the, fir the first frame was a great first frame. He made a tremendous clearance when he was Thank behind you. in that. And he's just not kicked on Stuart from there. To break. Thank you. As I say, since then, Ronnie's not really been put under any pressure. As you say, John, when he's not under pressure, Thank he just you. goes through the gears. 
Not the best of break off shots. He's left, left his half ball red to the left corner. And there's a path around the back of the black. Mm, surprise, he's missed it. Thank you, stop calling out now, please. And yeah, the crowd are trying to get behind Stewart here. I want to see a match. Careful with this one. Much too thick, much too thick. Chairly, you'd have to say, John, it looks a little bit overawed by this occasion tonight to me, since the first frame. Yeah, it's it's just confidence sapping Six. when you miss blacks off the spot and then you miss a few balls you're expected to get. And as he said in his interview before the match, he knew the majority of the crowd would be on Ronnie's side. Ronnie having to play a safety shot there because he played a poor oh, positional shot. Six. That's a poor safety shot. So maybe he's gifted a chance here for Ronnie, uh, for Stewart, sorry. It will certainly help if the black goes to the opposite corner. I'm not certain it does, though. If it does, he doesn't have a lot to do with the cue ball. It's not happening at the moment. It is not happening for Stewart at the moment. And if this black goes, it's an absolute black simple place. starter for Ronnie. Well, the black didn't go. Well, but the red went, and that cleared the black. That's why Stewart Bingham had to play the forcing follow through. It's funny yeah. how fractions, if that. Black would have been available for Stewart. He could have just stunned the red in, but he had a bit of work to do with the cue ball, causing him to miss the pot. Oh, mm, Ronnie there trying to force the red in so he could get position on the black and get the black back on his spot. Stop Maybe calling out, please. Bit off a little bit more than he could chew there. No, I think it's time to get a bit of fire in his belly, as it were. Get angry. Six. Seven. Mm, poor shot. I think the pink's straight to the green pocket. I was playing for it to the right centre. Yeah, and the last thing he wants is a testy one like this. There's more pressure than normal on this pink. But he potted it well. Pink gun in the black spot. 13. So, will they play the cannon on the red to the right of the pink? Mm, that's not the one 14. he played for, but he's on it. It's not perfect by any means. Well, it's a thin one, but it's one of those you've got to fully commit here. Tracer right hand side, cannon in that cluster. He's potted these a thousand times. Yeah. 
He did fully commit. And now he's back in perfect position. 20. Twenty one. Twenty seven. Twenty eight. Now, normally you'd expect him to pop the pink and come into that little cluster of five. The problem is, if he does that, the pink may go back on his own spot and be tied up. So that's why he was adverse to playing that cannon. He wants the pink to stay on the black spot. 34. 35. 41. 42. Well, has he just got a slight angle? He needs one. He doesn't want to be too straight. He's straight enough. He is straight enough. Just managed to pinch a bit, and he's played that well. Good shot. 47. <laughs> 33 points the lead. That equates to maybe three more reds to be... Sure of winning the frame. Forty-eight. Yeah, an important for his own confidence and belief in this match to, to win it in one visit. We settle for that. Fifty-four. 55. This pink will put him 47 points in front. So after this pink, red and the blue would do. Red and the blue would put him 53 points in front with just 61. 51 remaining. Roll the blue in and Ronnie O'Sullivan will need a snooker. So Ronnie had a good chance here, played a poor positional shot and then missed the red. He was trying to force in to get back up for the black. But it's only one snooker needed. I don't think there's a pot on here. Well, maybe there's a plant, is there? No, just playing the safety. As I say, it's only one Stupid snooker required. 67. It's been done before. Black to pot, and he knew that was the only way he could keep it at one snooker. 
Oh, sensational. Absolutely sensational. He's given himself a chance now. Not bothered about being on the red, as long as he can get the snooker. 16. I'm watching Stuart Bingham in his chair, he just, he doesn't know what to think about the, the last two or three shots as he's been played. Body on Sullivan, 16. He must have been delighted when they were the third last, the last red. An incredible black in the middle, and a long red, and now he's in trouble. That's the natural line, but there's so much room around that red. He's cut out the, the escape down the right-hand side if we look. That's the line, but you've got to trust yourself. He's got to hit this. We have a new favourite now, 33 points behind, 35 remaining. Pink or black off this red required. Well. Needs to miss the brown, and he didn't. He got the kiss on the brown. Eight. So this yellow, if he takes it on, is a very thin cut, but how can he get on the green? No, decided to play the safety. Don't blame him. Ronnie O'Sullivan. He doesn't want to knock the pink safe, though. And he's left a pass for Stewart to get through to this yellow. So it's all about this yellow ball. too thick he's got away with it he's got away with it but he may be in trouble when he comes back to the table <laughs> well, this shot we're seeing now, John, this is what I've missing alone tonight just black Once again, a little bit too thick, and if that cue ball comes away from the cushion, here's a chance for Ronnie. One good pot on the yellow. And it could be a frame winner. Yes. Great yes. pot. And perfect on the green. He needs the remaining Five. colours. He may have to play a little cannon from the brown here, just leave himself a nice angle on the blue. Well, he decided he could get past it, but he's wrong side of the blue. Nine. But as I always say, you'd rather be well the wrong side, so straightforward, in and out of balk, just got to judge the pace. Just got to judge the pace. Needs a bounce or to slow down one or the other. It's not bad, it's not great. Where's the cue ball going? Where's the cue ball going? 20. This black for an amazing frame to pinch. It's there! Well, that is absolutely incredible. 
Global. When Ronnie O'Sullivan needed one snooker, I didn't put it out of the realms of possibility, but that black he potted in the middle back to keep him in the frame was absolutely outstanding. And in the end, he takes a frame he should never have got. And he's now four clear. 5-1. Um just got a feeling he was going to win that frame. There was just something about it. There was a certain inevitability about it that when he came to the table, I thought, you're going to win this frame. And as for Stuart, well, to be honest with you now, he's just got to go out and play no miss snooker, relax and try and get in it because 5 1 down against seven. O'Sullivan, you didn't give him much hope, would you? O'Sullivan, O'Sullivan needs one more frame to get into an 11th Masters final. Ronnie breaks off, hoping that he doesn't Quiet, have to please. break off again this evening. And then he can win the match before that happens. But Stuart, well, he must be thinking nothing but negative thoughts at the moment. He's got to try somehow to clear his head. But that's not the best safety. I think there's a gap between green and blue for this red. There is. Oh, it right across it. And this red just above the black will go. So Stuart gets first chance. What's he got left? One. Eight. Got a couple of reds he can go at. He's not absolutely inch perfect. But a little bit to do with the cue ball. Right. It rolled it in nicely. He's got quite a few loose reds to go at before he contemplates playing any cannons. So a chance to settle into the break, so to speak. Sixteen. Seventeen. Twenty-four. I wouldn't hold much hope for Stuart winning this match, 5-1 down, but all he can do is just concentrate as hard as he can, one ball at a time, one frame at a time. 32. And just see if he can try and put a couple of frames together and 33. run under some sort of pressure. One four seven would be a good way to start, John. Yeah, well, he's made three in tournament play, so he's no stranger to that. Forty. Yeah.
41. I wouldn't say he's got the perfect angle on this black. And running round of two cushions can sometimes go wrong. You can see. That little bit of adrenaline has just overhit it. 48. Now, has he got the natural angle to pot this red and miss the cannon on the black and play for the black in the same pocket? You only really know if you're right behind the shot. Forty-nine. Played it well. And now I'll have to go into them. I'd like to hit this half ball. This red, that's perfect. That's unlucky. You hit that pack well there. Maybe a little bit more pace would have been better, but you made the right contact on that red. I can count myself pretty unlucky not to be on anything. He's got a pot to the right corner, but he'll be playing it up for a bolt colour. If he was in the club, he'd He'd risk playing off, screwing off two cushions to stay in the black, but the match situation is not the same. Well, he has played it. Not he cares, he's got nothing to lose now, John. 5 1 down. No. He's got maximum on his mind. 57. Sixty-five. Just left himself maybe a little bit straighter than he would have liked here. I suppose he could screw back off the side cushion, leave himself a choice of reds, the one in the middle of the table and one of those two reds at this end. In the end he could force the angle, but can he get back on the black? Anyway, the point is, if he pots this red, he will go 73 points in front with just 67 remaining. The red to the, the right of the four. If he's straight in the black, he would possibly screw back, leave the cue ball where it is now. A red to the left centre. Yeah, if he's straight enough, if he gets somewhere near that circle, he'll be on that red. Yes. That's perfect. I bow to your expertise there, John. I bow to your expertise. Well, he's just under hit it slightly. He wanted to be a little bit straighter on this black. He can play for a choice of two here, though. The red to the left corner, or the one that's near the right-hand side cushion. Play the, that could be to the right corner, so you play the cue ball in an area. situation he was in to have a go at the maximum, every credit, Mr Black, he'll be disappointed, but at least he's won the frame, still trails though, five frames to two. Going towards the corner pocket, but 
Even the path to it has been covered by the green. Decided to go for the attacking shot. Don't blame him, the situation he's in. But it's always difficult when you're striking down like that. Ooh, it looks like it's a nice, easy start. We'd black to follow. No problem. Well, thank you. Certain if the black will go to the right corner. Eight. I'm not certain it goes to the left corner, but it certainly doesn't go to the right corner. So Ronnie will have to go up for blue or pink here. I don't know whether the pink's available. Nine. Not hard enough for the blue. I think you play for a choice of pink or blue there. Puff of the cheeks from Ronnie. He's not really his cue ball control. Hasn't been his best tonight. I know I'm being picky, but I expect so much from him when he's in amongst the balls. Oh. Yeah, and it caused him to miss it. He didn't want to play the pink. He was worried about it. So unexpected miss though. shakes in the head and I think Ronnie Stephen is a lot stronger character than he used to be things like that would really affect him but I don't think they affect him as much as they used to well, but Stuart at the moment not really having the run and isn't it always the way at this game when you need a bit of luck you never get it I think if he was Rainbow. being punished for mistakes more tonight, Ronnie, he might have let it get to him a bit more. But the fact is, he's still 5-2 ahead. And he's not been anywhere near his best. Stuart Bingham, one. But he won't be getting any pleasure, you know, out of you know, not playing well or missing easy balls. It's obviously an obvious thing to say, but... I was just about to say before he made that, missed that pink, John. He's been one of the best at closing the match out. Normally when he gets in, he just... It's never any problem. Wrapped his cue on the floor there. That was a poor safety. So for some reason, Ronnie's just gone off the boil. What? Well. You know, he has been saying that because of his back problem he just feels as though he's not getting into the line of the shot as he would like but he slightly opened the door here for Stuart Bingham six oh Seven. the dreaded kick the dreaded kick and the worst kind on nothing just a simple roll through Brown ball. Seven. 
Seven. Stuart Bingham. Oh, Stuart will be a little bit disappointed there. You make this a tougher safety shot for Ronnie. He should have covered the left hand side of the pack. A little bit pacey. No real pressure now on Stuart to play a, a better safety than that. <laughs> and he has done. Again, a little bit too much pace, so hand on the table. Better safety shot you'd expect. Ooh, and if this bounces, it could be tight behind the yellow. Tight behind the yellow. <laughs> you be careful here. There's one with the outside red. He could leave a red to the right middle. Well, he's trying to get into him off two cushions, but he's got to miss this black. Well, for this. <coughs> Stuart Bingham, seven. <coughs> oh, Stuart. Obviously, he could have him replaced, but he's going to take this tricky red on. Mm. As well as it happens, he's not left anything. Could quite easily have done. I think if he plays his red this tight to the cushion, he won't be playing the pot. He'll be playing it thin enough to come off the top cushion and side cushion. He tap on the table. I think he's just saying to himself, come on, concentrate here. He's getting up and down on the shot. Just get up, have a walk round and think about it. Yeah, that was the shot I expected Ronnie to play on his last visit. But it's not the best length from Stewart, so Ronnie could probably play a better shot here. Trying to get it on that port cushion, use the yellow as a blocker. But neither player at the moment finding that port cushion. Ronnie's concentration's left him at the moment. This is a better shot. <laughs> Snooker done all reds. It looks like it's going to be the two cushion escape with pace. Going to have to put plenty of left hand side on this though if he's hitting this side of the middle pocket. 
Oh, played it well. Well, that's a bonus. He didn't play it that well. Stewart can hit the red, but he can't get back to Bork. He's not certain to get this safe. Well, he tried to get it. Well, I'll tell you what, he couldn't have played that any better. If it was behind the brown, what a tremendous shot that was. I didn't think he could hit that red fin enough. And a few taps on the table there from Ronnie in appreciation. That was a superb shot. Yeah, last two safeties from Stuart were excellent. Foul, miss. Mm, this cue ball's going up behind the yellow. If it is, it could be a free ball. Stuart Bingham, four. Maybe not. No. There's a gap. So you would think he'd have it replaced. I don't see any value in playing the shot himself. As you can plainly see Ronnie trying to come off the top cushion and just catch this red something less than quarter ball to get the cue ball back to the balk end. Misjudged it again. And this, well, it could be a free oh, ball this time around. Stuart Bingham, four. Free ball. Yep. So what a chance Yellow now ball. this for Stuart Bingham. Always difficult to judge those. That yellow, of what? course, counts as a red, so colour to follow. <coughs> Looks like the pink is going to go in the black spot. So we'll, we'll tie things, just tie things up a little bit. He wants his cue ball to bounce. And that's a poor shot. And a big margin for error to get nicely on a red there. Seven. This is now tricky. He's got to play at a pace to get out for the black. Unless he can get, find a gap to play the pink to the other corner. Oh, well, normally when they hit the first job, he didn't go in. You think any harder, this was going to wobble. Back on its on the black spot. The pink I don't think is available into the right corner, but the black is. What a 14. chance this is. Fifteen. Just not got complete control of the cue ball. He just seems to be hitting him and he's like getting the dead white. Get yeah, that cue through a bit smoother. Black will go on the highest available, which is a blue spot. No problem for Stuart, that. Twenty-nine. 
30. Just about got an angle on the black. This black will put in 51 points in front. Not a couple of reds, a couple of colours would do it. He'd like a better angle on the black, but I think he's just about OK. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. You'll want to make sure he gets plenty of points on the board this time, after what happened in the sixth frame. This red will put in 59 Fourteen points four. in front, with 59 remaining, so just red in the colour. 45. And this all came about, this opportunity, from one of the best safety shots you'll see for quite some time that Stuart played. Didn't look any way he could get back to the balk end. And he caught the red so thin. Left it behind the brown, and that offered up this opportunity. He's won the frame now, because he's perfect on this red. Ronnie won't be coming back to the table in this frame. I just overcut this. It's not going to drop. Stuart Bingham, and the 66 frame. 66 points, but that's enough for Ronnie. So, Stuart Bingham at 5-1 down with a count in him out. I'm not too sure now. He's only two behind. Five. That's, that's all Stuart. And as I said earlier, one shot at a time, one frame at a time. You know, string frames together, get a bit of momentum, and hope that you frustrate Ronnie. And then, you know, make Ronnie... You know, a bit edgy trying to go over the line. You'd have to say in his career, he's, it has never happened, but that's all Stuart can hope for. Thank you. Frame nine. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Thank you. He left this red. Well, Ronnie's down quick. He must have done. Good deal, but he didn't get enough backspin on the cue ball. I've no doubt he'll play the black, but it's a thin one. Very difficult, and it just caught the near bump, and they're not going to go in then. So what a what? chance, because all the reds are in the open. Yeah, it's just a matter of keeping your concentration because there's 11. not a lot of work to do with the cue ball in this break. Everything's in the open. It's almost like a practice setup. 12. Yeah, and he didn't have to play any precise positional shots because worst way he's always got that red near the right centre. Ronnie opened up the reds. OK, it was a <coughs> little unlucky not to be better on the black, but that's the risk you take. The last three frames, Stuart Bingham 19. has made a break of 67, 81, 
and a 52 in the last. 20. Oh, by the way, the frame when he made the 67, of course he lost. That's where Ronnie got the snooker. But the point I'm making, Stephen, is he, he is starting to score when he gets these chances. 27. 28. Yeah, that's all I can do. As long as he's at the table, there's no snooker, there's nothing your opponent can do about it. I'm sure Ronnie's not panicking at the moment, but a little bit concerned. Normally when he gets to the, the stage in the match where he needs one to win, he finishes off the match quickly. 34. We're having to play that insurance red, if you like. 39. Over the middle. But I think he's straight enough to be able to hold for the blue nicely. 40. Oh, has he overrun it? Looking at the body language, it tells me he has. 45, thank you. It tells me he has. He played for the, the red that's in between the black and pink spot. And he's not on it. And that was very careless. It really was. So much margin for error here. Well, he's looking at the possibility of an ambitious plant here. The only thing he knows is that the cue ball will be going back to the bulk end. But uh, percentage-wise, getting this with a gap between the two, very low. 45, Stuart Bingham. But as I say, he knew the cue ball was going back to the bulk end, but what an opportunity he's let slip there. on here to the right corner. They say if you're going to miss that type of shot, error on the side of being too thin, but that was very thin. A wry smile from Ronnie. And the same with Stuart. As I say, you err on the side of hitting it thin, but not that thin. So, nice easy starter. But that's all oh. it is. The rest are very, very awkward Thank when you. you think he came to the table. 44 points behind. This will be some achievement if he can win the frame at this visit. Long odds against. Eight. Nine. Take the red off the cushion here. Sixteen. Yep, it's just got slightly easier. Seventeen. Is this the challenge he needed, John? To spark his concentration back into life. 
22. Came to the table with a sniff of an opportunity to win the match. So I won't be happy with that shot. No problem though. That pink's a big ball in the middle of the table. That cue ball needs to run. Needs to run, and it hasn't. 28. Now, this red down the side cushion is very tricky. Got to be so accurate with this. No. No. 28. So, half a chance he had there. It was always going to be a difficult task to win the frame. Now, let's have a look at the score. Stuart, 16 points in front. He needs the three remaining reds. And we know where the problem red is. What? The one on the left-hand side cushion. He needs that to win the frame at this visit. So it's not a formality. Well, you always feel if you're going to play the cannon, Eight. you'd like to have the, you'd like to play the black into the left corner, so you've got the, the black and the red. He's open the cannon, in your eye line, but I don't know if he can do that. No, he had to play for the black Nine. in this corner. And well, I don't think he can cannon the red. What's he going to do? Just stun it in and play a double? That's the plan. 32 points the lead, 35 remaining, red required. 16. It's the double. Not there. 16, Stuart Bingham. <laughs> Ronnie needs this red and blue or above and the remaining colours for frame and match. Amazing pot once again. Quiet place. Pot of the match there. Six. There's that great pot again, but he's not perfect on this yellow. But it's there. Eight. And he's not going to be perfect on the green unless it slows down. Well, you said, Stephen, he needed a challenge. He was, he was asked a question. What a clearance this will be. Needs the three remaining colours, and he's landed absolutely inch perfect on the blue. Twenty. Well, sharp intake of breath, but this isn't too bad on the pink. Twenty-six. And well, Stuart Bingham looked as though he was going to get right back in this match, but what a last red Ronnie O'Sullivan potted, and in goes the black. And Ronnie O'Sullivan has beaten the world champion. What an amazing match. I know Ronnie will say he won't be happy. Stuart Bingham won't be happy. But Ronnie O'Sullivan will be pleased at the two of them because he's in the final. And he beats the world champion, Stuart Bingham, by six frames to three. Putting uh, this uh, particular tournament has been uh, fantastic and sometimes he's criticised his long game but uh, an interesting match from Ronnie's perspective, it, it will be interesting to see how he judges it because there were times of frustration. Congratulations, Congratulations Ronnie. Congratulations Ronnie. Yep. Through to your 11th Masters final. Yep. Tell us first of all the good bits 
from that performance today? I don't know. Uh, a bit wobbly, wasn't it? You know? We both didn't play well, you know, but uh, just pleased to get through to the final, I suppose. And there were a couple of moments of brilliance from you. We're just picking out that uh, that stunned red to the, the green pocket there in the in the deciding frame, in, in effect. Uh, I was just so frustrated that I just thought, you know what, I, did, I didn't really care, to be honest with you. I don't know. I mean, I mean no disrespect to Stuart, but I mean, he'll even admit it himself that that was really poor, but it was so bad, I just I didn't care, to be honest with you. I mean, I, but you, but it's you, not that I don't care, it's just yeah. that I, I feel like I can't get on the shot properly, and I'm, I'm queuing all over the gaff. I mean, I'm... I feel like I'm going to miss every shot I'm on, and it's just so frustrating. I've got no time in. I'm, my touch is gone, and I'm like, Phew. it's scary out there, you know, especially playing in front of a crowd like this, live on TV, massive match. And I've just got no touch at all. I don't know what's happened to me, but it's like, Phew. I'm in bits. I'm not even left handed. I can't even hit a shot left handed. It's <laughs> but just scary. There, there were times, right? Okay, so yeah. Stuart Bingham didn't clinch the frame, he left you no. with one snooker. You mm. pulled out a black off the green spot, which was just an astonishing shot. I know you didn't clear them up in one visit, that would have frustrated you, but then when you got the chance to clear the colours, yeah. it didn't look like you were struggling there. You took them so well. No, I'm fighting, I'm fighting for every boy out there. You know, I can't, I can't give in, you know what I mean? But it's, uh, you know, I'm just trying to just hold it together. But. It's really a struggle to put two or three balls together. You've got to you know? be pleased with your attitude, then. Oh, if, it's not, attitude, if it's not, yeah. if it's not yeah. all right, you know, yeah. sticking yeah. in there. Yeah, and listen, I'm just hopeful. I mean, I have to just give it time. You know, I mean, I'm not sure whether it's my back's out of place and it's just messing around with my, with my posture, my technique. But I'd, I have to give it two or three, four months, just to see. But if it's like that, I mean, there's, there's no point to be honest. I mean, I was, I was over it in balls by two, three foot and. I couldn't play certain shots because I just couldn't get the cue through, and it was it was really awful out there for me, really. You know, and I was just I mean, if Stuart would have been able to put a few together. I could never have held on to him, really. Nevertheless, having had the problems that you've had, herniated disc in your back, yeah. you've come back. You haven't been on the circuit for a long time, Ronnie. Right. Uh, does this? exceed the expectations that you'd set yourself this yeah, week? Yeah, totally. I mean, if I just won one match here this week, I would have been <coughs> happy, you know, and uh, to have won two and now to have won three, you know, I'm just I'm just trying to hang in there and just trying to not give in, you know, and just see what in, happens. In a way, it's a little bit of adversity, like, yeah, you've got to fight, it's something enjoyable. When your, your foot was uh, playing you up, you sort of dug in there as well. It sort of gives you a bit of a challenge. Well, that was different because, you know, um, but with this, this thing, I mean, I've never really, for the last month, six weeks, I've really been struggling, yeah. even in practice is to make 20 and uh, I can only put it down to something that's happened to my back. So you've, because got, a, you've got a big final to play somewhere, you're going to be all right? Yeah, no, I'm not in pain, it's just that my, my alignment is just so out that I've got no touch and feel, it feels like my cue and my body are just so disconnected and you know I'm just having to wield the ball in at uh, most times and just hang in there and try and not give in because it's, it's easy to throw the towel in and go, you know what, I'm not feeling it, but I can't do that, I have to to grind it out and see what happens, but it's, it's, it's really hard, you know. Well, you've certainly dug in over the last few games. Your long game, your medium range game was fantastic against Mark Selby. You got over the line against Mark Williams. And now Barry Hawkins, and that's going to bring back some memories of that Crucible final. He gave you a real run for your money in that final. It was a brilliant final, as I recall. You made six centuries, he made two. What are your memories that's of playing Barry? That's the best I've ever played, you know. The best snooker I've ever played was against, well, it felt like the best snooker I've ever played was against Barry in the world final. I just couldn't shake him off, you know, and uh, I couldn't have played any better. And, you know, that was one of the most enjoyable matches I've ever played. And Barry's a top guy, a top player, and uh, a bit like Stuart, you know, they've kind of gained confidence from playing more and more tournaments. And they've, they're as good as anybody there is out there. Did you keep an eye on today's game? Did I you watched watch all of it. Did you? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I've watched all the snooker this week. I think the standard has been unbelievable. The table seems yeah. to play, not too many kicks. It's quite generous, the pockets are ah, quite right, generous. Okay. It seems like it's, it's, it's a good scoring table, but I think the snooker has just been unbelievable. There's been yeah. so many players that have been playing well at the same time. Normally you get one player playing well, but this week there's been like so many good matches. You know, I've enjoyed watching it. Well, I've enjoyed playing in it, but I've enjoyed watching <laughs> it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you've reached a milestone, another one tonight, Ronnie. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but that was your 62nd appearance, and you've nicked Jimmy White's record of appearances in the Masters. I tell you what, it's been a long time you've been playing it, 22 years, 1994. I'm stubborn, I've just hanged around long. <laughs> but it's, it is some achievement, and I know this is a, an event that you really love. What, what gives you a buzz about this London crowd, do you think? Uh, oh, it's, it's a great event, you know, and, and when you're playing all right here and you, you're kind of just feeling it amongst the balls, you know, there's, there's no there's no better tournament for me personally because it's right on my doorstep, brilliant support, and I'm just sorry that I haven't been able to perform and give them... Um, yeah, they hated it. it no, no, <laughs> listen, 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 it might have been a good performance, but I feel flat myself. I feel like it's very hard for me to 
get that zip in me and that bounce in my step because I'm really struggling, you know. To, Tell me, yeah. do you think they go away thinking that you've played bad? No, yeah, do yeah, they think, yeah. do you think? Because I, I think know. they've got away saying, what a performance. I don't know what they think, but I, I felt really yeah. embarrassed and, and just I felt like I was really shortchanging them, really, and I just felt, <laughs> I felt, you know, <laughs> oh, mate, I was just... I don't know what's, what's going on, but... Well, you haven't shortchanged anybody, believe me. I forgot me. how to play. It's always a pleasure to see you play, and it'll be a pleasure to and see you in your 11th well, Masters. Two sessions tomorrow, it's going to be great fun. Come back bouncing tomorrow, OK? God, I'm going to need some power <laughs> Well, let's show you how... Uh, how